This is Nick Reddy with GoEngineer. Today we're going to look at EPDM's feature, Copy Tree. In order to demonstrate the options with Copy Tree, we're going to use the file set LP Gas Grill Assembly. As you can see, I have the current version of LP Gas Grill Assembly set to version 1 of 2. We'll see the reason for this in a minute. The file set contains many different sub-assemblies, parts, and even cut lists, and all of which are going to be copied with Copy Tree. It even is used in the drawing LP gas grill assembly drawing. In order to access Copy Tree, we go to Tools, Copy Tree. I have a couple of different options with the Copy Tree feature. I can first copy the files to a folder, or I can copy the files to a compressed archive. I have the option to use Windows Zip Integration Program as the default, or I can go to the Administration tool, under the settings, zip program, I can change this to an external zip program and use instead of Windows. We're going to copy this here to the desktop and into a new folder called Copy Tree. I also have the option to browse. As with many assemblies, there may be references to numerous sub-assemblies and parts. In order to help navigate this, I can show tree lines to show the relationships between parts. And when it comes to selecting which parts I want to include or not include, I can show reference selection controls on which files to include in the copy. If you notice on all the sub-assemblies and on parts containing cutlass, I have two different selection tools underneath copy. The right checkbox will copy neither the part nor its subassemblies, whereas the left checkbox will copy the reference parts but not the subassembly itself. If I don't care to see the referenced parts of the subassemblies or even the cutlass, I have the option to show only the top level, giving me a much more condensed list. As you saw before, the current rollback of the local version was one of two. Here you can see I'm going to be copying the latest version. I have the option if I want to use the local cache version and attach that version to the copy. Copy Tree allows for you to copy the new files and change their name either in whole or in part. But first, let's actually see where these things are going. Underneath columns, I'm going to select the target path, and I'm going to get rid of the checked in and checked out. As they're just taking up room on my screen. Here I can see the full path to where these files are going to be saved. I have the option to transform the files by either adding a prefix, a suffix, replacing the entire name, or I can replace the file with a serial number. We're just going to add a prefix. I can apply this to all of the files or to selected files. We're going to add the prefix to all the files new. If I want, I can single left click on a file name and change just that name. I can remove that prefix that I just added, and all the files will say new except for the left panel side. If the files are stored in some type of a hierarchical folder structure, I can preserve the relative paths. Here you can see I have a new folder, CAD files, underneath the copy tree folder that I've, I'm going to create. If any of the files have a drawing associated with them, I can include that drawing. And you now see the drawing files referencing the parts and or assemblies. I can regenerate the serial numbers in the card with each of these parts when I create the new copies of them a new serial number will be created. Finally, I can check in the files with a comment.
and I can go to copy this. Here on my desktop, I have the new file tree. I have the new folder file tree. Yeah, I have the new folder copy tree. I have all of my parts that I renamed with the prefix under new with the prefix new underscore in the folder CAD files. This was Nick Rady with Go Engineer exploring EPDM's feature copy tree. <laughs>